friends, I'm Tabby. And I'm Caitlin. And today is a very special installment of Too Long Didn't Read because we are doing one of my favorite books, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. So exciting. Today's the day. Today is the day, and we are going to start this episode off with the synopsis of the book, because that's the whole point of these TLDRs. We know some of you don't really necessarily have the time to sit down and read the book yourself, so we will summarize it for you. We read it, so you don't have to. Yes, we're so kind and generous. I wish someone had done that for me in high school and college. You're so welcome. Yeah, because you guys, you don't even have to read Spark Notes. Like, we are just tell. all you have to do is sit and listen. That's all you have to do. And that's way easier. You're so blessed. Okay. So, with that, we're just going to jump right into it. So, the story opens up with Mrs. Bennett telling her husband, Mr. Bennett, that a young, wealthy single man named Mr. Bingley is moving into a property called Netherfield. Um, so these people, they live kind of in the countryside in uh, Britain. And so she's super excited because they have five single daughters and she is just, fingers crossed, really hoping to marry off one of her daughters to Mr. Bingley because, like I said, he's rich and that would be great. The Bennett family makes Mr. Bingley's acquaintance at a ball And he asks the eldest Miss Bennett, uh, named Jane, to be his dance partner twice. And so this is kind of like the talk of the town because everyone's like... It's a big deal. Oh, my God. Like, is he into her? Because also she's, like, super pretty and super nice. And so everyone's like, oh, my God. Like, uh, he loves her. But they're not wealthy. Like, they're not wealthy people. So the Bennetts themselves are not wealthy, but they are socially... They are just socially... They have a high social status to acquaint themselves with the people who genuinely have money. So because Jane catches the attention of Mr. Bingley, like all the Bennett ladies are super stoked and it's like the talk of all the ladies. And then while they're at this ball, though, the guests also meet Mr. Bingley's two sisters brother-in-law and good friend, Mr. Darcy. And when everyone meets Mr. Darcy, they're like, Oh, he's rude. He's really rude and arrogant and stuck up. And he they also know that he is the wealthiest one there. So Mr. Darcy has an income of 10,000 pounds a year, which in the modern dollar, I think I looked up is about $800,000 a year. So he's um, rolling in it. Yeah, not to mention he also has land and an estate. Um, and then Mr. Bingley makes, I believe it was 4,000 pounds a year. Um, anyway, so at this ball, Elizabeth overhears Mr. Darcy talking to Mr. Bingley. And basically, she overhears Mr. Darcy saying that she, Elizabeth, is not as hot as her sister Jane. And so she's like, fuck this guy. Oh, pardon my French if the children are listening. Oh, uh, yeah. We <laughs> have made it a goal in TLDRs to not curse. And we do really bad at it. But anyway, it's pretty jacked up. He's it's like, yeah, she's jacked up. He's not a handsome woman. He's like, she's tolerable, I think is the word he used. Yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. But not handsome enough to tempt me. And she was like, oh, all right. Um. So in this book, there's a lot of like passage of time. Like it's yeah. not all just within, you know, like days and weeks of each other it's um over the course of so much time um so some time passes and jane and mr bingley um they have little crushes on each other it's very cute they're annoying like annoyingly (laughs) in love and they're getting to know each other when they can at social events um because you know it's not part of polite society for her to just pop on over there they gotta meet each other and you have to invite each other over too like yeah. you have to make appointments basically uh, meanwhile mr darcy finds himself growing more intrigued by elizabeth because she's the whole package she's witty she's fun even and though she's not as hot as her sister she is hot darcy. she is beautiful she's a beautiful woman but she has no idea that he feels this way. She just assumes he hates her guts and she returns those feelings because he's an asshole. So we also learn that this group of officers will be stationed in Meryton, which is the town the Bennets live next to. And the two youngest Bennet girls, they are thirsty hoes is what they, they are. are. They are silly girls. Um, and they're thrilled because they want to go just creep on these soldiers all day, which yeah. I get it. 
Oh, I, I so get, get it. it. Yeah. Because I remember how I was at like, what, age 16. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And like, I was like, there. At they the were husband hunting. Yeah. Jane is invited to Netherfield, which again is Mr. Bingley's estate. She is actually invited, though, not by Mr. Bingley, but by his sister, Miss Bingley, Miss Caroline. And uh, Mrs. Bennett is like, yes, but you should go over there on horseback because it looks like it's going to rain and you'll get stuck there. She's plotting. She's a mastermind. Because Mrs. Bennett knows that Mr. Bingley is not there. Whenever Miss Bingley invites her over, like her brother's not home. So she's like, you have to basically get stuck there so that you can run into Mr. Bingley. And it does rain and Jane ends up getting a cold (laughs) and because she's unwell, they invite her to stay as a guest and uh, so she can recover. So Lizzie, the next day, walks the three miles to Netherfield to go check on her sister. And when she shows up, she's all covered in mud because it rained the day before. And the... (laughs) Uh, the sisters of Mr. Bingley are utterly scandalized by her appearance, but <laughs> Mr. Darcy is like, "Well, she looks kind of, she looks kind of good like that. Why is she kind of? <laughs> Why is she kind of? He's like, damn, she looks so hot, like with her little cheeks all flushed." We also learn. Oh, so I I might have mentioned this already, but I'm not sure if I did. But they invite Lizzie to stay as well at, while mm-hmm. Jane's recovering. So while Lizzie's staying there, we learn that Darcy has a younger sister that he's very fond of and writes to often. And it's really clear that Caroline Bingley is interested in Darcy. Like, she's even like, oh, my God, like, your handwriting is so even. Like, it's embarrassing how yeah. down bad she she's is. Very pick me. <laughs> she's very pick-me. She's very pick-me. And meanwhile, Mr. Darcy has a thing for Elizabeth. And he's even said this to Caroline. Basically, he complimented how beautiful Elizabeth's eyes are to Caroline. So Elizabeth doesn't know this, but Caroline does, and she's jealous. Uh, So there's a little bit of cattiness. Caroline's pretty impolite to Elizabeth and is kind of like trying to make her look foolish, uh, poking fun of her. But Elizabeth, she's very like carefree and witty, and she can hold her own. And she just kind of like lets those things like roll right off of her. Like she does not care. So Jane finally recovers from her cold and the Bennett sisters return home and we find Mr. Bennett informs him that his cousin, Mr. Collins, will be visiting him. And if Mr. Collins has no haters, I have passed on from this world. We are dead. I am dead if he has no haters. Oh, he's just gross. So Mr. Collins is a clergyman under Lady Catherine and is the male relative who will inherit Mr. Bennett's estate when he dies. Um, So basically, none of his five daughters um, are able to inherit his estate. I forget what kind of estate it's called. Um, Uh, It's called Longbourn. But like it's like a certain type of estate where like you can't have like a female. I um, see what you're saying. Anyway, he has to have a male who will inherit it. That goes to Collins. Um, So Mr. Collins intends to select one of the Bennett daughters as his wife because he feels entitled to do so. And Um, well, he's also he is like, I'm so kind and generous because in his mind, he's like, I'm inheriting it. So he's like, I feel so bad. Like, (laughs) here's what I'll do for you. Little asshole. One of your daughters. And he wants to marry Jane since, you know, apparently she's just the prettiest. Um, And she's also the eldest, so it makes sense. But Mr. Bennett tells him that she is spoken for, even though she's not yet. So he agrees that he will ask Lizzie instead. And Lizzie is like, over my dead body. Mr. Collins and the Bennett sisters, they take a little walk into town. They go to Meryton. And on the way, they meet a handsome, charming young officer named Mr. Wickham. He's also with another friend. I think he's named, like, Mr. Denny or something. But something who cares like about him? He's not important. But they're all standing around, like, chatting. Mr. Collins is getting ignored. He hates it. And as that's happening, Mr. Bingley and Mr. Darcy ride by on their horses. And Elizabeth notices that there is this really weird, awkward tension between Mr. Wickham and Mr. Darcy. They, like, have a little, like, staring contest, basically. And she's like, I want to know what that's about. So later, Mr. Wickham comes back with them to see the, uh, the Phillips family that they were going into town to visit. And 
Mr. Wickham is like basically chatting with Elizabeth and he's like, yeah, so you could probably tell that Darcy and I are not on good terms. And she's like, yeah, like, tell me more. He says that he basically is really close to Mr. Darcy's family. He's like, I basically grew up with them. I was like another son to his father. And when he died, he was supposed to leave me a job as a clergyman, sort of like what Mr. Collins uh, does for Lady Catherine. Mr. Wickham says he was supposed to receive that position upon Mr. Darcy's father's death. Uh, And he claims that Mr. Darcy Jr. (laughs) gave the job away to someone else because he's like, he's so jealous of me because his dad loved me as a son as well. And like, he's just so proud. He couldn't handle that. And so Lizzie, because everything that she's seen so far of Mr. Darcy has led her to believe that he's a very proud and arrogant man. She immediately believes Mr. Wickham's story and she's like, wow, what an absolute villain is he? Like he Mm -hmm. is the scum of the earth. When Lizzie explains that Mr. Collins actually works for Lady Catherine, Mr. Wickham tells her that Lady Catherine also happens to be Darcy's aunt. So he's like, "Uh, oh, related. (laughs) what a small world. Like here's all these connections. And he's like, speaking of, so Lady Catherine's daughter is set to inherit a fortune because Lady Catherine's so well off, you know. And he's like, so it's likely that she is going to marry Mr. Darcy because, you know, they're they're both rich, they're cousins, and like back then people did marry their cousins. Like you Mr. Know, Collins the is their family as well. Exactly. So like that was very common to like keep the inheritance in the family. But Lizzie finds that funny because she knows how much Caroline Bingley was trying to riz up Mr. Darcy. <laughs> and poor Miss Lady Catherine's daughter is just like sickly and not well. <laughs> well, probably because they keep it in the family and she is probably yeah. inbred for generations. Poor, poor thing is just not fit for life. <laughs> <laughs> we do wish her the best, but yeah. <laughs> she is sickly. So, Mr. Bingley hosts a ball at Netherfield. Um, and Lizzie is stoked because she intends to dance with, Mr. Wick- dance with Mr. Wickham there because, I mean, she's trying to see him every chance she can get. But when she goes, she realizes that he isn't there and assumes that it's to avoid Mr. Darcy. She becomes even more disappointed when she can't avoid dancing with Mr. Collins. He is ready to go. Like, <laughs> just inserting himself into every conversation, every dance he can. Lizzie is relieved once that is over, only to be shocked when Mr. Darcy asks her to dance. So up till this point, like, she has refused him at every turn. Yeah. Um, and I think that just want, drives him to want her even more. She uses the opportunity to bring up Mr. Wickham, and Darcy, of course, is closed off about the topic. So she's a little sus of that. She's like, obviously, Wickham was telling the truth if he's yeah, not willing to talk about to it. Hide. Yeah, A um, little sus. So after the dance, Caroline Bingley tells Lizzie not to trust Mr. Wickham's account of things. But Lizzie's offended on Wickham's behalf because, you know, this stranger has told her a story. So must be true. Must be true. Um, and basically tells Caroline that she believes him over Mr. Darcy. Which is crazy, because again, this is a perfect stranger. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But she just believes that Mr. Darcy is an asshole. It's like, yeah, no, I believe it. This man is evil. Mr. Collins also learns that Mr. Darcy is Lady Catherine's nephew and awkwardly introduces himself because he is like, oh, I must be in the acquaintance of this man to you know, increase my social standing as well. Oh, Mr. Collins is wretched. Everybody wants to be his friend. Nobody likes you, Mr. Collins. Nobody wants to be his friend. Speaking of, the next morning, Mr. Collins asks for a private audience with Elizabeth. And Lizzie is basically like, no, 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 mom, please stay in the room. Please don't leave me alone with this man. But her (laughs) mom is like trying to mastermind this proposal. So he proposes marriage to her and she is like, I am going to stop you right there. I am not interested. And he is like, oh, you're just playing hard to get. Like, I get it. You're being coy. And she's like, I love that shit. (laughs) Yeah. No, he doubles down. And she is like, no, I assure you uh, the answer is no. And so Mrs. Bennett throws a fit. She's like, Lizzie, God damn it. 
you are going to be a spinster and I'll never talk to you again if you don't marry your cousin. So she's like trying to get her husband to convince Lizzie to marry him. And he, Mr. Bennett says, this is iconic. It is. He's an icon. He's an icon. Mr. Bennett says, your mother will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. And I will never see you again if you do. And so Lizzie is like, thank God. She is a daddy's girl. She's like Slay. Slay. He's the father we wish we had. Uh, Mr. Bennett, the man that you are. So Mr. Collins then, of course, feels really awkward and kind of gives Lizzie the cold shoulder the rest of the day. But I think it went about as good as it could. Like, things blew over relatively yeah. quickly. She is her own woman. She and is her own woman. I love that about her, but everyone else hates that about her. Yeah, they're like, I wish you... for Mr. Her Bennett and Mr. Darcy. <laughs> and they're like, damn it, I wish you could just be normal for once. Um <laughs> No, she'll never much, be normal. Much to her mother's chagrin. So the next day, Jane gets a letter from Caroline, and Caroline writes that their party has left Netherfield to return to London, and they don't know when they're going to return. And Jane shows Lizzie this and is like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, I thought things were going really well. And she's really worried that Caroline is passive aggressively telling her that Mr. Bingley is in love with Darcy's younger sister and that Jane can kindly, you know, move on and get out of their life. Lizzie reassures her that Mr. Bingley's affections for Jane were very obvious and that he clearly loves her and that it's going to work out. Um, And she's certain that Caroline's mistaken because she is a treacherous troll. (laughs) And then crazy Mr. Collins moves on quickly and ends up proposing to Lizzie's friend, Charlotte Lucas. And she's super shocked when Charlotte tells her of the news of their engagement. And I too was also shocked because poor Charlotte thinks that she simply cannot do any better than Mr. Collins in life. This is Um, where I am 27 years old. I've no money and no prospects. Yes. Into the story. Poor, poor, poor Charlotte is a victim, Um, (laughs) truly a victim of their societal standards. Yeah. For the best. God, that's Mr. Collins was like, this could not have worked out better for me. But she ends up being like satisfied, like happy. Like she, um, Eh. she, as satisfied. She's like, it worked (laughs) out, I guess. And, but hey, there's something realistic about that because again, I think this is like, what 1813 so like you know that's pretty realistic i do Um, think he probably treats her well like he's not like a a heinous person he's just like unfortunate to be around yeah he's just really annoying yeah Uh, but i'm sure he's like a very kind husband agreed so mrs bennett's brother and sister-in-law the gardeners visit the family for christmas and They invite Jane to return with them to London to go visit Caroline and hopefully see Mr. Bingley if he seems interested in in doing that. And she's like, yeah, I I think I will do that because she's not ready to give up on things with Mr. Bingley. Mrs. Gardner also tells Lizzie that she shouldn't pursue a marriage with Mr. Wickham because they're both poor. So she's like, even if you are in love with him, like that's not going to work out for anyone because if neither of you have money, you're just going to end up on the streets. And Lizzie is like, don't worry. Like, I assure you, I'm not in love with that man. Uh, she's like, I think he's I think he's attractive. I think he's charming. But, you know, like, I'm not. She's like, basically I'm like, I'm not a fool. Uh, because that's one thing that Elizabeth is not. She is not a fool. She's not. Her younger sisters are, but she is not. So um, the gardeners also invite Lizzie to go on a vacation with them when the summertime comes. And so that'll come in later. She agrees to do that. And, you know, I think the gardeners are truly, like, the voice of reason throughout this book as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Like, very much just realists. They're going to tell you how it is. And I think that was very refreshing. Yes, and it helps push things along between Lizzie and Darcy later. For sure. Mr. Collins and Charlotte have their wedding. Um, Jane travels back to London with the gardeners, and after spending some time there, she writes home to Lizzie that Caroline has ignored her and has basically implied that Mr. Bingley intends to sell Netherfield and never return. And it's at this point we're like, man, could Caroline get, like, any fucking worse? No, she sucks. So Mr. Wickham also stops paying attention to Lizzie because a young lady inherits a large fortune and captures his affections because the second he sees more money, 
he oh, was yeah. like, all right, it's been so real. I'll see you later. Yeah. I'm off to bigger and better things. And she realizes, like, that really didn't affect her at all. She's like, all right, that's cool. Like, wish yeah. you the best. She I must be, like, good for in them. Love with him anyway, because yeah. I simply don't care. She writes about it to Miss Gardner, saying, I am now convinced, my dear aunt, that I have never been much in love. And I'm like, yeah, girly, you can do leaps and bounds better. Yeah, because, again, she... Lizzie is not interested in settling. Like, she would yeah. rather just she die alone. She, she just doesn't have the time to be bothered with the foolishness of society. In the month of March, Lizzie goes to visit her friend Charlotte and Mr. Collins. And Lady Catherine and her daughter also happen to come by. And they invite everyone to dine with them at their estate called Rosings. So Lizzie and Lady Catherine are mutually unimpressed by each other. They're basically like, (laughs) Lizzie is like, that lady is a tyrant. And Lady Catherine is like, that lady is uneducated and embarrassing. (laughs) Yeah. And so a couple weeks into her visit, Mr. Darcy actually comes to visit Lady Catherine along with his cousin, Colonel Fitzwilliam. And they see each other. And so... Lizzie, by the way, is still mad. Like, she is still mad about everything with Mr. Wickham. She is mad about them, like, up and leaving Netherfield without saying anything to Jane. So she kind of, like, passive-aggressively is like, oh, yeah, Jane's been in London these past three months. Like, have you seen her? And she already knows the answer is no because they've Mm -hmm. all been ignoring Jane. And so he's, like, awkwardly like, oh, no, I I didn't realize Meanwhile, Colonel Fitzwilliam appears to be interested in Lizzie because, you know, she's who she's is pretty, it? She's fun. <laughs> she's pretty. And she's kind of like, oh, yeah, like, I'll, I'll spend time with you. But the three of them basically banter the rest of that night about Lizzie's, like, lackluster piano skills and Darcy's lack of manners. <laughs> and Colonel Fitzwilliam <laughs> is like, yeah, my cousin is a little jerk, isn't he? He is. But I love him. <laughs> <laughs> He's misunderstood. He is misunderstood. So the next morning, Mr. Darcy finds Elizabeth alone and stays to have a little chat. He's like, why are you avoiding me? Quit it. (laughs) Um, So she asks whether Mr. Bingley intends to return to Netherfield and he makes it seem as if he does not plan to. Because truthfully, like Mr. Darcy just simply doesn't approve and he never has. And that just is what it is. Charlotte begins to wonder why, or sorry, Charlotte begins to wonder whether Mr. Darcy is crushing on Lizzie because of how he always tries to interact with her when possible, even though it is just the most tragic conversations they have (laughs) every time. Um, Because Lizzie hates him. But he will take any scrap that she is willing to give him because my man is dumb bad. And he's so dense. He's like, yeah, she's just like that. She's just a little mean sometimes. She's just, she's just a bitch and a lover. And Charlotte's like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> she like, I does not like you. <laughs> um. So one day, Lizzie goes on a walk with Colonel Fitzwilliam, and he is telling her, like, they're just kind of chit chatting, and he's like. Oh, they're talking about Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley's friendship. And he's like, oh, yeah. So recently, Mr. Darcy actually just saved Mr. Bingley from an imprudent marriage. And Lizzie is like, tell me more. Because, again, he doesn't know this has anything to do with her family. Uh, He's just gossiping. So he said that there were very strong objections against the lady. And Lizzie is like devastated because so once she gets alone again she literally she is so heartbroken on jane's behalf that she just cries until she has a headache and she basically tells charlotte like listen i'm not leaving the house tonight i don't feel well like she is upset for her sister so she's there alone when someone comes to the door and she is shocked to find that it's mr darcy who had heard that she's not feeling well so he was all worked up and came to check on her But he doesn't realize that she hates his guts right now. Like, she is so mad about Mr. Wickham. She is so mad and devastated about Jane. And he, not knowing any of this, blurts (laughs) out 
blurts out a profession of love and proposes marriage and Elizabeth could not be more flabbergasted because my man cannot read the room he cannot he cannot oh my god oh this is the height of passion I got like stress hives reading this oh it's so just like oh man literally the timing could not get worse (laughs) Oh, it's so embarrassing. I love it. It was so embarrassing. Um, So obviously she's like, go fucking kick rocks, actually. (laughs) She cannot accept his proposal. And he is, like, shocked. He's like, I truly thought we had something special. What do you mean? Please, Um, it's so funny. And he asked why, and she's like, because you're rude. Um, You said you wish you didn't love me, and you also told Mr. Bangley to not marry my sister in, you know, so many words. Um, Like, what else can (laughs) I say? And he argues that he was right in telling Mr. Bingley not to pursue Jane um, because it wouldn't be good for his social standing. He's like, no, I was justified. And she's like, be so for real. (laughs) It makes her even more mad and so so funny. She is fired up at this point and then brings up like his cruelty towards mr wickham and mr darcy is like yeah for sure like i'm being a dick to that guy Uh uh-huh and she's like yeah no you 100 percent are like i simply don't understand and then he like storms out of the house he's like i'm not doing this right now and lizzie's just like i don't know how this situation has turned on me and how i'm the bad guy right now this is absolutely insane The next day, he actually, Lizzie, she is, like, out for a walk to clear her head because she is, like, there's been a lot. There's been a lot in the past 24 hours. So he, while she's out, leaves a letter for her. And basically in this letter, he is, like, I just, I was too emotional yesterday, but I really wanted to go ahead and address two things. And he is, like, first of all, I want to address the whole Mr. Bingley and Jane situation. So he was, like, Not only was I concerned about the status of your family, but also I was pretty sure that Jane was not interested in Mr. Bingley. And he was like, Mr. Bingley was like down bad and she wasn't as interested. So I didn't want him to get his heart broken. But it just turns out that Jane is naturally shy and calm. And so he was like mistaking that for her being disinterested. So that was just like a misread on the situation. And he also explains... Uh, the Mr. Wickham situation. He is like, I did not deny him that clergyman job. He said, instead, Mr. Wickham actually asked for money to go to law school. So he asked for 3,000 pounds. And I don't remember what that translates to, but it was like, it was a decent sum of money. Yeah. Because remember, 10,000 pounds was like 800,000 US dollars. So he gave him that money to study law, the 3,000 pounds. But then, like, I think it was, like, three years later or something, he was asking Darcy for more money. And he's like, no, like, I can't be doing that because I gave you money to study law. Like, like you should a have a job. Money. Yeah, he's like, you should you should be a lawyer right now. Like, why are you not working? And whenever he told him no, and then Mr. Wickham attempted to elope with Darcy's younger sister, who at the time was like 15 years old. And her inheritance, I think, like translates to like 2.4 million US dollars or something yeah. when I looked it up. So like he tried to elope with a child bride <laughs> and and Mr. Darcy is like, the reason why I didn't defend myself sooner is because if that got out about my sister, like it would ruin her prospects of marriage. Mm -hmm. Like that was, it was basically a scandal when that happened and they were able to keep it quiet. But he's like, I couldn't say anything about it. And so after Lizzie reads this letter, she feels so ashamed and embarrassed for believing Mr. Wickham and immediately taking his side. And she like goes for another little walk. And when she gets back, she learns that uh, Darcy and Colonel Fitzwilliam have gone ahead and left and so she is like i could not feel like a bigger idiot right now (laughs) but i got some egg on my face yeah god (laughs) which i mean here's the thing like he's a scammer mr wickham is just a crook she shouldn't she shouldn't be embarrassed 
So Lizzie leaves Charlotte in Mr. Collins' house um, and stops in London to stay at the gardener's because um, she and Jane will leave for home together from London. So Lizzie tells Jane pretty much all about Mr. Darcy's proposal, the truth about Mr. Wickham, like just a quick rundown of the events that had happened during their stay. And they discuss whether they should expose him for being a little rat bastard. <laughs> um, but decide not to because the soldiers are going to all be leaving soon anyway. And they don't want to, you know, stir up any unnecessary, like, drama, essentially. Like, because it, it could have some repercussions. Especially um, because, also, Lizzie is worried that if they, like, bring it up, that he'll somehow try to sully the Darcy yes. family name in return. And she truly, I mean, especially after reading the letter, does not want that happen. His little sister does not deserve that. She is an innocent bystander in this. Exactly. So as the regiment prepares to leave Meryton, uh, the colonel's wife invites Lydia to travel with them to Brighton. Lydia. Oh, my, Lydia. My sweet, sweet darling. So Lizzie asks her father not to allow it because of her younger sister's immaturity which was so valid. Spot on. Uh, so spot on. But he thinks she'll be all right and gives her permission to go, which I think that was a huge oversight on Mr. Bennett's part. But at this point, he was like, get her, get her out of here. Just yeah, her I think he just, he wanted yeah. some time and space. But yeah, uh, yeah. He was like, he, yeah, get her, get her gone. Don't worry, he'll come to regret it. So the summer comes. And remember, Lizzie agreed to go on that vacation with her aunt and uncle. Her aunt really wants to visit Pemberley, and that's Darcy's home. And so Lizzie is like, oh, my God, how awkward. I don't want to do that. And she is like, don't worry. Like, none of the family is going to be there because they're, they're not, like, slated to return until tomorrow. So she agrees to go. And a housekeeper is giving them a tour of the estate, and it's absolutely gorgeous and perfect, and Lizzie loves it, and it's beautiful. And she sees all this art, too, of, like, Mr. Darcy and his family, and she is just... Again, like, she is feeling devastated for how things, like, ended between them. During the tour, Darcy <laughs> unexpectedly shows up and Lizzie is like, oh, my God, how flippin' embarrassing. Like, I want to crawl it all and die right now. He could have evaporated on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> she was so embarrassed but then he is super nice and like doesn't seem mad to see her at all but he just he seems genuinely surprised but he asks if he can introduce her to his sister the next day and she agrees because what is she gonna say like she's already like i've made things so bad like i have to say yes well, it's like the whole time, too, the staff is, like, hyping him up. They're like, yeah, yeah, he is the kindest and most generous person. Like, him growing up as a boy, like, he is just, the like, the sweetest soul. And she was like, for real? So the next day, Darcy, his sister, and Mr. Bingley visit Lizzie and the gardeners. And Lizzie learns that Miss Darcy is so shy. She's so, so sweet, though. Um, and there seems to be no romantic connection between her and Mr. Bingley, as Caroline had implied in her letters to Jane, because, again, Caroline is a little snake. So after the visit, Lizzie tries to unpack her feelings for Mr. Darcy uh, because she is realizing she's beginning to care for him. And after, you know, she's figuring out, like, he's not an absolute ogre of a man and, like, he's just been portrayed to be that way by everyone else, she's like, oh... Well, I feel like deep down I've always had these feelings, but I've just been, you know, burying them. Yeah, because um, even when she didn't like him, like, they had such good banter together. Yes. And she enjoyed his company. Yes. Like, they, they kind of had, like, verbal sparring in a way. And, you know, it was... It I'm fed sure her intellectual spirit. Yeah, I'm sure then now she realizes, oh, my God, like, that would be what I want in a partner. Yeah. The next day, Lizzie and the gardeners go to Pemberley at Darcy's invitation. The men go out fishing and, like, the ladies stay in. And Miss Caroline Bingley is, again, super jealous of Lizzie, trying to make her look foolish. But Lizzie's super unbothered, and it ends up just making Caroline look like a jerk, basically. Once Lizzie and the gardeners leave, then Caroline continues to talk trash about Lizzie, but, like... Darcy's sister is like you you're alone in that girly <laughs> and then when the men come in she keeps going and she basically says Lizzie is ugly and Mr. Darcy is like actually she is one of the most beautiful women I know He's and like, so... that shuts her up <laughs> so you can actually step down um so Lizzie receives a few letters from Jane that had been delayed in their delivery 
And the gardeners go ahead and leave her while she stays behind to read them. And Jane writes to her to inform her that Lydia has eloped with Mr. Wickham. Um, they're panicked. Obviously, no one can. No one knows where they are. Uh, she had signed her name, the future Lydia Wickham. Um, and so, yeah, they're panicked. And she wants to go after her uncle immediately to tell him the news. But when she goes to leave, Mr. Darcy is being escorted to her by a servant. Um, and so she tells him she has to go fetch Mr. Gardner. Um, and he insists that they send the servant instead because she looks like she's about to faint, which she might have been. Um, yeah, she you know, was pale. <laughs> that was a big fucking deal. And so Lizzie is just upset, you know, bursts into tears and tells Mr. Darcy the distressing news about Lydia. Um, And he's pissed, rightly so. Like, he's upset. He's angry at himself because he feels like this would have been prevented if he had just been upfront about Mr. Wickham's character from the beginning. Um, So when he leaves, Lizzie realizes that she does love him because he is a good man, Savannah, and is really sad about it because... Uh, she's certain that even if he did still want to marry her before, he certainly wouldn't want to now because of this scandal attached to her family. Thank you so much, Lydia. Yeah, it all could have been avoided. Uh, so Lizzie and the gardeners return to Longbourn. The family is extremely distressed. Like, Mrs. Bennett is in hysterics. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Mr. Gardner and Mr. Bennett set out to find Lydia in London. They're looking around. Meanwhile, the whole town gossips about it. And Mr. Collins even writes a letter suggesting that the family should disown Lydia to prevent the other daughters from suffering, Just, like, the effects of the scandal. You know, putting his two cents in. Uh, like, no one asked you, Mr. Collins. Do something helpful. So, Mr. Gardner is... Uh, he he remains in London while Mr. Bennett like comes home and Mr. Gardner finally writes to the family and they're like, they found Lydia and Mr. Wickham. They are not married yet, but Mr. Wickham has agreed to marry Lydia if his debts are paid and if he receives a yearly stipend from Mr. Bennett. And Mr. Bennett does agree to it to, you know, protect his daughters. But he is worried. He's like, there's no way that that's all he did it for. He's like, I'm sure that Mr. Gardner had to pay him. I think he was like, Mr. Wickham would have been a fool to marry her for any less than 10,000 pounds, which again is $800,000. A lot of fucking money. (laughs) And so then he feels really like his pride is hurt because then he's like, oh shit, now I'm indebted to my brother-in-law. Like my family had to bail my daughter out. But Mrs. Bennett is immediately fixed. She's thrilled. She's like, oh, thank God, there's She's a like, wedding. She's like, I did it. I, I did, did it. it. <laughs> um, she forgets all about the fact that it was a major scandal and that Mr. Wickham is a piece of trash. She's just happy her daughter's getting married. And like, honestly, Lydia is being, like, held hostage. Like, she doesn't know it, but, like, she is yeah. actually being held hostage. So. Oh, yeah. She is the most unfortunate victim in the this The little book. idiot. <laughs> Good luck to her. Meanwhile, Lizzie is feeling just depressed because at this point she's realized she's in love with Mr. Darcy and she knows now he will not touch her family with a 10 foot pole. She's like, I should have, I should have said yes back then. Like, damn it. I should have gotten my little hooks in him because I Uh, love that man. But she would never because she is a smart lady. Okay. She didn't know. Yeah. She didn't Um, know. She thought he was horrible. So after Lydia and Wickham are married, (laughs) they come home to see the family because at first they were like, no, like, (laughs) don't talk to us. We're mad at you. Stay away. (laughs) Um, Finally, they're like, yeah, you can come over. It's fine. Because they're getting ready to move away because he's being stationed somewhere else. And they're like, okay, like, (laughs) okay, we'll see you. Um, And Lydia mentions that Darcy was at their wedding and was like, "Uh oops, uh, you weren't supposed to know that. And Lizzie wants to know more because she's like, that's really fucking weird. Um, (laughs) And so she um, writes to her aunt to ask what's up. And her aunt replies that it actually wasn't Mr. Gardner who found and paid off Mr. Wickham to marry Lydia, but Mr. Darcy. And Mr. Wickham comes in to chat with Lizzie and they have an awkward little combo where they dance around the fact that, you know, he is one of the worst people she's ever met and has just been doing treacherous things. But Lizzie ends the conversation by saying they're family now and, you know, they'll put the past in the past and move forward together like a mature adult. 
I yes. wouldn't, me personally. Yeah. Um, She's too kind. But Mr. Darcy just loved her so much that he did it for her. And the only reason he did it was because Lydia was her sister. Mm. And he did not want that to ruin her. Oh, a king, truly. He put aside his pride and gave that yes. money to Mr. Wickham. Who all for the sake of Elizabeth. doesn't deserve it. Who does slightest. not deserve it? Uh, Mr. Uh. Darcy. So, Lydia and Wickham depart, and the Bennets learn that Mr. Bingley is going to be returning to Netherfield. And when Mr. Bingley does come to visit Longbourn for the first time, Mr. Darcy comes with him. And Lizzie is like, oh! And, and he is, like, really awkward and kind of not saying anything. And she's like, oh, oh, like, does he not like me anymore? Do I like him? Like, she is just a mess. Like, she <laughs> cannot unpack her feelings and what this means for her a little while later mr bingley visits again but this time he's alone he's like oh yes mr darcy had to go to london for 10 days and so elizabeth is like okay i'll use this time to try and like get my shit together because i need to stand up off the floor yeah Uh, yeah girl (laughs) because i because she is a mess And Mr. Bingley, in uh, Mr. Darcy's absence, continues to visit the Bennett family and soon proposes to Jane. And the whole family is overjoyed because this is just, this is what was meant to happen from the beginning. He is truly just a sweet, sweet, sweet man, Mr. Bingley. He's a golden Uh, retriever of a man. Yes. And him and Jane are just couple goals. I love them so much. Wish them nothing but the happiness. Yes. About a week later, Lady Catherine visits Longbourn and asks to speak with Lizzie and she's like I'd rather jump Die. on the roof truly <laughs> um like Catherine is like I heard like a crazy ass rumor um that my nephew intends to propose to you and Lizzie's like oh if it's so crazy then why'd you come all the way here to ask me if it's true yeah like, that's pretty crazy <laughs> um And Lady Catherine is annoyed and tells Lizzie that Mr. Darcy is meant to marry her daughter. And Lizzie's like, okay, well, if that's the case, then I guess we have nothing to worry about. So why are you actually here? Um, And they argue some more, but Lizzie stands her ground, which pisses off Lady Catherine because she is just a bulldozer of a woman and always gets her way. And that's probably why her poor daughter is the way that she is. Um, (laughs) But obviously, she's, you know, feeling a little insecure about it because she knows Lizzie is a better match, like, truly, for him, at least. Not, like, financially, but, like, in terms of women. But personality-wise. Yeah. (laughs) Because her daughter has the personality of a saltine cracker. But that's not her fault, again. (laughs) It's not her fault. (laughs) I feel bad for her. I do feel really bad for her daughter. I do, too. Imagine that being your mother, first of all. So, Mr. Bennett, meanwhile, receives a letter from Mr. Collins, who alludes to a rumor of an engagement between Lizzie and Mr. Darcy. And and he is like, now, Lizzie, this is crazy because you (laughs) hate that man. Right. (laughs) And in the letter, Mr. Collins warns him. He's like, Lady Catherine does not approve. So Lizzie needs to not accept this proposal. And and so he's like joking. He's like, oh, so is that why Lady Catherine came here the other day to tell you not to marry Mr. Darcy? (laughs) Ha ha. Like elbowing her ribs. And she's like, like, yeah. Lizzie is too embarrassed to tell him the truth because right now she is feeling like She's in love with Mr. Darcy and will never get to marry him. So she's like, ha 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 ha. Like she's just gonna be crazy. She literally is like, I have to laugh or I'll cry. And uh yeah, so her dad's kind of like, What the fuck is going on with you? Like, why are you and I just think it's like so that? funny that everybody is like, Oh yeah, Mr. Darcy's gonna propose, and she's like why is this world so cruel and sick and twisted? <laughs> so sick and twisted. She's like, man, who is spreading these foul rumors? <laughs> so a few days later, Mr. Darcy accompanies Mr. Bingley to a visit to Longburn. Um, and Lizzie is surprised that he came because she, at this point, she truly just has no clue what's going on, what's true and what's not, you know, what's real. So they go for a walk and she... This is just like, thank you for what you did to save Lydia from scandal. Like, I love you so much. You're the best. And he admits that he did it because he's still in love with her and wants to marry her. Ah. Ah. He's like, I did this for you just because she's your sister and I want what's best for both of you. Um, and Lizzie is just 
so relieved and confesses that she's fallen in love with him too and that she did not think he was gonna come back and uh it was just such a good happy ending in that moment I was like finally like Uh, we're like a 60 chapters in good god I know but all the drama and uh as Lizzie has to break this news to her family of her engagement they are all of course surprised because she had strongly disliked him Um, whenever they first met. So she has to explain to each of them uh, what's happened, how her feelings have gradually changed, and how she's gotten to know that Mr. Darcy is actually a very kind and generous man. And Mr. Bennett is just relieved to learn that it was Mr. Darcy who paid off Mr. Wickham and not his brother-in-law, because he's like, like, oh, thank thank God. God. We'd never be able to financially recover. (laughs) He's like, I could never have them over for Christmas again. Um, but Mr. Darcy's not family yet. So he's like, oh, I don't owe you anything then. Uh, Jane is just happy that her sister is happy. And of course, Mrs. Bennett could not be happier because her daughter is about to marry a man who's like 10,000 pounds a year. Fucking rich. <laughs> She's like, move over, Jane. There's a new favorite daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. She is just the most outrageous mother on the face of this earth. (laughs) But we're going to talk about the reasons why we love her. Oh my God. I do. I do love her character so much. So after their marriages, Elizabeth and Darcy and Jane and Bingley all live happily ever after. And after a year um, at Netherfield, the Bingleys move closer to Pemberley. So they're neighbors because Lizzie and Jane out of all of them are certainly the closest to each other. Lizzie and Darcy's sister becomes very close as well. Um, Kitty visits her older sisters frequently because they're like, you cannot spend any more time with your younger si- or with your sisters. Like you need to come here so that you have some good role models. And um, she does, she does improve personality wise with that. Um, Mr. Bennett misses Lizzie a lot and visits her often because that's his girl. That's his baby girl. Mary remains at home with her parents because she's a child. She's young. She has time. Um, and also socially awkward. She is. And might not marry anyone ever. No, there's something wrong with her, maybe. Um, <laughs> Lydia and Wickham continue to try and get more money. So they are just constantly somehow running out of money. I would love to know what they are spending it on because that was a lot of money that Maybe they were gambling. Given. Like, how did you blow $800,000? And Darcy and Lizzie are like, no, no, thank you. Like, you, you're not getting a set out of me. Um, and then Lady Catherine, she just, she stays mad. You know, she never gets over her grudge and she'll die that way too. The gardeners visit Darcy and Elizabeth as much as they can, which brings them a lot of happiness because they feel like they really do owe their union to them since they convinced Lizzie to visit Pemberley. Um, like I said, the gardeners are truly the heroes of this story, um, but they will live happily ever after. The end! Guys, that's the synopsis. So let us kind of do a quick little like discussion about the characters, um, just in case there's anything that needs to be cleared up. Elizabeth, or Lizzie Bennet, is, of course, the main female character. She's the second eldest Bennet daughter, and she is known for being, like, really witty and clever, and she has, like, a really strong bond with her father and then with her older sister, Jane. That's kind of who she's closest to in the family. Um, And then also her aunt and uncle, the gardeners. Yeah. She's really stubborn um, and, like, set in what she believes, which I love that about her. Um, But especially when it comes to, like, her judgment of Darcy (laughs) due to her pride and prejudice. um, (laughs) She is so sure that she's right about him being a bad man because that's just how he was. And truly, I I don't think he was, because I thought the same thing when I read it the first time. I was like, Mm -hmm. yeah, this dude's an asshole. But, like, he had every right, or not every right, but, like, he was justified in, you know, why he did the things that he did, I think. Because because, he he was looking out for his family. Yeah, and and when you think about, like, when he finally does reveal everything, like, the truth to Lizzie and the matter, like, he is closed off and extra careful about protecting his friend Mr. Bingley because he sees... How Mrs. Bennett is behaving, he sees that as a red flag Mm -hmm. because he, in his experience, was betrayed by Mr. Wickham, who was only after the people in his family for money. And so when he sees how, like, Mrs. Bennett is behaving, while she means 
She means oh. what's good for her daughters. She's not trying to be malicious in any way, but she is so worried about her daughter's well-being because they have no money to leave their daughters. And so, yeah, she is trying to find them a match where they're going to be financially supported. But when Darcy sees that, he is like, oh, red they're flag. In this for the money. Yeah. And so that's why he's so worried about protecting Mr. Bingley. So everything that he's doing, it really is coming from a place of protecting the people he cares about. Uh, Mr. Darcy is probably one of my favorite rich characters that I've ever gotten to read about because he doesn't he's, act like it. He's the um, only billionaire romance that yes, is a good man. <laughs> that's uh, He is the blueprint um, <laughs> for the billionaire romance novels. No, he is just a good man who cares about his family and wants to see them, you know, be successful. And, like, when he loves, he loves so hard. Oh, yeah. Um, and it, it can come off, like, aggressive or that he's, like, very aloof and distant and whatever. But um, he just says that to protect them. And I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that about him. It's um, a defense mechanism that is. he's developed. And same with, like, Lizzie with her, like, kind of hard-headedness and stubbornness. Because the thing is, like, she's often correct in her judgments of people to be honest and, and so, so she's Mr. Darcy yeah so they're they're just so convinced they're like you know I've never been wrong before and I'm not going to be wrong now and then they are <laughs> about each other and I love that <laughs> that's that's why they belong together and then Jane Jane is the oldest Bennett daughter Um, she is described as most beautiful and has just a very kind and docile nature But because she is, you know, very shy, this causes Darcy to believe that she is not interested, does not truly have feelings for Bingley, Um, which I do. I do love that Mr. Bingley eventually is like, you've got it wrong. Yeah. You you don't see us like together. Like you just see like what you see on the outside. He's like, I know her, though. And yeah, he's like, I'm going to go get my woman. Get your girl. And that was probably uh, the best pairing. Uh, I know, like genuinely, Jane and Mr. Bingley can do no wrong. Um, Mr. Bingley is basically Prince Charming. Like he is kind, he's handsome, he's generous, he's wealthy. Like he has no flaws. The worst thing he does in this story is that he values his friend's opinion a bit too highly and kind of lets it talk him out of his own feelings. But that's not even a crime, you know? Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's not necessarily a bad quality. It just happened to mislead him, misguide him in this situation. But his friends felt like they were doing the right thing, which I get it. Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. The opposite, like, (laughs) energies that they bring is everything. Oh, they are so so I want to say... This book opens up with these two. Yes. And so I think their characters, of course, they're important for multiple reasons, but their characters are very important to this story because it's what captures the reader's attention. And it just could not be a more like energetic, like humorous. Dynamic. Yes, dynamic. And I forget every time, like when it's been a while before I do a reread, I forget how freaking funny they are like he's just so funny I he's love him. just so unserious i know and so it's so tired the man is tired the man is like get these women out of my goddamn life <laughs> like holy shit why are you always here why yeah. are you still here he just <laughs> likes to tease them about it but like, he loves he them will. he loves them so dearly oh yes he will do anything and everything for his for his ladies though this is girls mrs bennett is just a crackhead mother and there are just there's so many times especially like when Jane is sick at Netherfield and she and Lizzie both go over there and she (laughs) is just a hundred and ten percent like she is off her rocker like dropping the most unsubtlest hints about (laughs) them like being like together that Lizzie was like holy shit like can you not like can we not do this right now she Uh, embarrasses her girls every day she is just unashamed and I kind of love that about her and I do too she knows what she wants she knows what she wants for her girls as well and she's gonna make sure they get the most advantageous matches they can find and does it work yeah yes except for Lydia she's like you know Lydia's a lost cause. Like, that's probably the best she's going to be able to do. That's on me. 
speaking of the other daughters, we'll just kind of quickly go through them. I feel the worst for Mary because she is truly the middle child. She does not have like a partner in crime. Like Jane and Elizabeth go together, Kitty and Lydia go together, and then there's Mary. And she Mary just has no out. friends. No friends. Um, she's also described as being the ugliest. <laughs> um, and then Kitty and Lydia, they go together. They're really silly. They're really frivolous and they take after their mother. And, and I think that's why they can't be mad at Lydia. Yeah. Because they're like, we set you up for failure. <laughs> like- exactly. And they're and Lydia's like, Mom, like, what do you mean? You've been like telling us we need to get married. And she's like, Yeah, you're not you're not wrong. <laughs> she's like, So, oh, so you went out there and married a man with no income and no lots of money. Debt. Cool. Awesome. All right. Okay. As long as you're married, I guess. You're not our problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. But I do think, like, it, it's for the best for Kitty to to stay with her older sister. She's, she's going to do well for herself when she is just a little more mature. She's she got a good head that. on her shoulders, but she's going down the wrong path. Yeah, she was well on her way to pull in a Lydia. Mr. Wickham. Oh. Just oh, a villain. A villain, you know, really a villain. For those of you who have watched the movie Frozen, he's basically Prince Hans. He is, yeah, because he's like, I'm gonna pretend to be charming and you know, really woo this this woman, especially whenever he was trying to woo Miss King, who was the one who was like who inherited like ten thousand pounds. Like he just woos a woman and then is like i'm gonna make this benefit me like how am i gonna get money and status out of this and yeah he sucks he sucks a lot he sucks so bad i truly am preying on his downfall every um, day every way charlotte and mr collins mr collins you just are just the skeeviest most delusional man and like i can't even be mad at him because like he didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> he is just so unrealistic. Yeah. Um, he is like that person that just wants everyone to like him, but goes about it in the worst possible way to where it is so violently off-putting that <laughs> you're like, maybe he is a bad person. He also, I mean, he just cares about himself. He's, he, he is selfish. But... I don't think that's the worst quality a person can have. He's fine. He's just not great. I mean, they're all a little selfish is the thing. Like, yeah, he's not the only one. His just came off a little more strongly. (laughs) Yeah. And then poor Charlotte. Oh, my God. Uh, Imagine, like, she did not think she could do any better, but she literally was a second choice to Elizabeth and was like, yeah, okay, I'll marry you. She's like, hell yeah, I was number two? Like, that's pretty damn good. She's (laughs) like, yeah, that's really, honestly, that's not bad. No, Uh, like, she's I get it. Lizzie's hot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Poor Charlotte. And last, but... Also, least. Least. She's the worst. <laughs> Lady Catherine is, of course, a very pompous and arrogant woman. Uh, Lizzie immediately clocks her as a tyrant. Like, the second she meets her, she is like, oh, she's a little puppet master. I get it. I get what the dynamic is here. And Lady Catherine also knows, I think, that Lizzie sees her for exactly who she is from the get-go. And is kind of like, ooh, how am I going to dispose of you? <laughs> she's so, like cunty but in the worst way yeah yes cunt derogatory yeah derogatory but Um, also serving a little bit of cunt yeah like as well because she did make it pretty far in life i will give her that yes and she did what not a lot of other women could do so yeah 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 she does need to find someone for her daughter just it won't be mr darcy but not mr darcy not her cousin yeah fucking gross out she should have saved mr collins for her daughter what was she thinking what the hell because she has that Uh, man under her thumb already and it would have been like well she probably recognizes all the terrible qualities in him no you're right um some honorable mentions, I think, should certainly be the gardeners um, because yes. they are the best. What? Like, I would love to have them as aunts and uncles. Like, oh, yeah. They're kind of just like little bougie, yeah. like traveling like, do you all the time. Or the countryside with us. Like, I think you need yes. the fresh air. 
Like and you should come with us. Yeah. They're like, you, you were looking a little sickly, my dear. Mm -hmm. Um, and also like you mentioned, like they really are not afraid of just telling it how it is. They yeah. like to be straight up and, and they were, and they were like, Hey, Elizabeth, I think Mr. Darcy might be in love with you. And she's like, uh, no, no. What you don't understand is that I ruined that. And they're it's, like, no, no, no. Like, I, like no, you simple bitch. Like, no, like he's still in love with you. Like, they really are just. They're kind of like Mrs. Bennett, and by being a little bit meddlesome, but they do it in such a tasteful way. Tasteful is a great word for it. Yeah, they're yeah. like, hey, first of all, don't marry Mr. Wickham because he is poor. Second of all, <laughs> you Mr. Are better Darcy than that. <laughs> is interested in you, so definitely don't marry Mr. Wickham. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yeah, Just they were keep, that out there. They were keeping it real, keeping it a hundred. Like we will not let our best niece marry a poor man. Mm -mm. And same with uh with Jane too, because like whenever they heard about Mr. Bingley, they were like, "Oh well, shit, come to London with us then, and and we'll try and get you." an audience with that man so we're gonna make it happen today <laughs> <laughs> like they're so real for that oh, i fucking man. love them i the gardeners are the best they're just they the are. best um and then i think the last one is caroline just an honorable mm. mention to caroline yes i truly wish she had ended up with someone just heinous just disgusting mr wickham um yeah no she deserved the like the worst of the worst because yeah. she was do instead of like using her energy to find her own like husband that wasn't Mr. Darcy, she was doing everything in her power to ruin everyone else's day. Yeah. She is like, first of all, Jane, get away from my brother. Second of all, Lizzie, you're ugly. Do you think <laughs> she was like a little bit in love with her brother, probably? Because like that's kind of the vibe Ooh. I was getting. Like, Ooh. why else? Why else? Besides the fact that they weren't as like wealthy as them, was she being like that? Yeah, because well, and at first she seemed to be so like kind to Jane and yeah. stuff too. Like she was just being a fake ass hoe that whole time. Like for what? For what? A little manipulative ass. Yeah, like you can't have him. Yeah, well, if she can't have him, no one can. That's right. That's kind of the vibes I was getting from her the whole time. Uh, the other day, I sent Tabby a TikTok, and it was like, <laughs> sorry, it, it said, um, born to marry him and raise a family of five, forced to be his older sister. I about projectile vomited. Ah! Um, it actually wasn't the original TikTok that I saw. It was like a stitch. So I wonder if it got taken down. As it should. As it should. <laughs> because if that was sincere, then you need to uh, go straight to the Straight to bins. jail. Straight to jail. But maybe just spend some time in the hospital until you're all better. Anyway, Caroline was bringing that energy. I agree. Okay, so we are going to do a few discussion questions. And these discussion questions actually are from the Chicago Public Library's website. Uh, so we'll just kind of go through, I think we have four prepared. Um, so the first one, in what ways are Darcy and Elizabeth guilty of both pride and prejudice? And how does this drive the action of the story? Yeah, that is a fantastic question. So I think... Like, in terms of, like, Darcy, like, his pride is definitely the first one we see. Well, maybe even his prejudice, because, like, he does come from, like, a very wealthy background. Mm -hmm. And I think was really quick to almost deem, like, the Bennets as worse than them. And that was just, like, a common prejudice of everyone who was from, like, a different social standing. And um, was that they didn't necessarily want to, like, associate themselves with people who were not going to elevate that status and I think he kind of let that get in the way of it at first. And then especially when, like, like he refuses to dance with her. That was, like, a huge slight to yeah. Lizzie. Oh, um, yeah. Like, a huge slight. And so um, right off the rip, like, we kind of see that a little bit. And I think that is, in turn, what causes Lizzie's pride to take over and be like, well, if, you know, he's going to be that way, then I'll do it right back. <laughs> Yeah, she immediately, like, takes a blow to her pride and is like, yo. And it leads to 
like because that formed her her first impression of him which originally the working title for this novel was first impressions i don't know if you've ever heard that fact before but yeah uh, but Pride and Prejudice, of course, is a very fitting title as well oh, because yeah. of this discussion question. But yes, so her first impression of him was so poor that as soon as Mr. Wickham has something negative to say about Mr. Darcy, she is like, oh, yeah, I believe that wholeheartedly because of this horrible first impression and the way that he offended me. So it basically leads to the whole thing kind of snowballing out of control. Well, yeah. he... Uh, that was not his intention. But again, I think because he is kind of prideful, he does not realize he is like, oh, well, of course, she would like me, though, automatically, because I'm a wealthy, attractive man. So once he starts to think, oh, you know what, she actually is kind of cool and fine. um, He just kind of assumes that will obviously be returned on her end. Right. Very interesting, like, dynamic between the two. I th- I mean, it was yes. a big learning curve for both of them. <laughs> yeah. To, like, oh, yeah. have to put those things aside and be like, oh, okay. Like, we and were they both really, wrong. <laughs> they don't even realize it until the big blow up with the first time he proposes. Mm-hmm. Because, like, up until that point, Lizzie is like, oh, yeah, I hate him. He sucks. He is kind of like, oh, she's actually really cool. And, of course, she's going to think I'm cool, too. Um. <laughs> But when he proposes, <laughs> of course, it does not go well at all. And part of the problem is when he proposes, he literally is like, you know, I tried to stop loving you because your family's so embarrassing. But here we are. It, but, <laughs> but here we are. And she is like, he's like, don't worry, I'm going to get you out of the hood, girl. <laughs> and she could not be more offended. And her pride is so wounded in that moment that she doubles down on her belief that he is the villain in the story with, like, Mr. Wickham and between, like, Jane and Bingley's, like, being torn apart. Um, And so they leave on bad terms, right? And what saves the or what turns things for them is the letter that he writes. Mm -hmm. But even he admits later at the end of the novel when they're actually engaged, he admits that when he first started writing that letter, it was out of bitterness. It was out of his Mm -hmm. like wounded pride of her rejecting him. And he was basically like, let me tell you something like (laughs) like he got something to say to you. But then as he started writing, he began to realize that really like what he what he needed to do was set aside his pride and take ownership of the possible error that he made in Mm -hmm. assuming that Jane was not in love with Mr. Bingley. And he also then takes the time to go ahead and clear his name in the matter uh, regarding Mr. Wickham, which was hard for him because, again, he had to be vulnerable. He had to potentially expose his family scandal Right. To someone who seemed to hate him, because that was bold on his part. Like, oh yeah, just made it seem like she couldn't stand him, and he's telling her now this really important like secret, his deepest, darkest, like secret. Yeah, so that had to yeah. have been very hard. That for was him. that was a gamble on his part for sure. <laughs> it was paid off though. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like that kind of answers that first question. The second question on here, Pride and Prejudice is a novel that many Austin fans read and reread over and over again. Um, What keeps readers returning to the book once the suspense of whether or not Darcy and Elizabeth will end up together is taken away? I feel like I can really address this one because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this was my seventh reread of this novel. (laughs) (laughs) Um. I I really love this book and even more frequently have I rewatched the movie adaptations. Mm-hmm. So don't you worry. Like I've consumed this story in so many ways. I think that what brings readers back to this is truly the cast of characters. Yeah. They are so funny and every character like has a purpose. Every character that's introduced has a purpose and drives the story forward in some way. And also the events that move the story along are just so dramatic and so like it's either funny or heartbreaking, but like they're so dramatic and they really keep things like the momentum is just nonstop basically. 
And I think also the gradual buildup of love between Elizabeth and Darcy is really great because on the one hand, on the first half of the story, you see that Darcy is like, oh, I, I was wrong. Like that woman, I want her. Like she's great. And Lizzie's completely oblivious to it. Mm -hmm. And as a reader, like that's kind of, that's something that I think people in modern romances do today too, where it's like the man like falling first First, and, and like people like that trope. And another thing is that turning point where now it flips and basically Elizabeth has to try and like attempt to make amends and wonders whether he is still going to love her after it. I think like, even though you know the ending and you know that they're going to end up together, like just reliving like that drama. drama. Yeah. It's just like, it keeps me going. It's like food for the soul. And yeah. there are so many good adaptations of it. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, you can just consume it in so many different ways. And I love that about this story. Yeah. I do think for me, it is like the supporting characters that, increase the rereadability for me Mm -hmm. and because every time you kind of pick up on like a new nuance as well or like something that you maybe didn't catch the first time that was just like a very witty piece that does add to the storyline um but I also like the way like the book itself reads almost like like a play Yes. Um, like there is constant movement throughout the story. There's not really any like slow pieces to it. No, there's Um, no downtime. I think that's because of the way like time is passing in the book. It's not like all happening within the span of like two weeks. This is all happening, you know, over the course of months or a year or whatever. Um, And that's what I really like about it is that it's just quick moving. Like, there's always something, like, there's Mr. Bingley arriving in town at the first time, the first ball, Mm -hmm. like, Jane gets sick and has to stay at Netherfield. Like, it's just, there's always something happening. They're never just, like, sitting around at home. And I think that is, like, the issue with some more, like, contemporary books, too, is that, like, there's just too much information being presented or there's characters that aren't helping the movement of the storyline or like there's things introduced that really didn't make a difference to the book Mm -hmm. at all. And with this, it's like each thing plays a role and it has a very specific timing in how it plays the role. And then they're either, you know, moved out of the story or they continue to like have that forward momentum. Yeah. Or like they'll be introduced at the beginning and then it turns out there's a connection that makes them real here like it's just very engaging and it's it's so intentional and Mm -hmm. I like that oh and I think that's just something to be said about Jane Austen in general like she just is obviously one of the greats um oh I love this question so the happy union between Darcy and Elizabeth is ultimately and unwittingly assured by Lady Catherine why is this master stroke of dramatic irony so satisfying for the readers it's just so humorous and and people love this because Lady Catherine, she's a villain. Like no one mm-hmm. likes her. She's a bully, she's mean, she's rude. And like when she comes to get all up in Lizzie's business and is like, "Promise me that you will not agree to a proposal to my nephew." And she's like, "I will not promise that." And because of this, like she goes and and begs Darcy. She's like, "Promise me because Elizabeth will not promise me that you will not propose to her and so he hears that and he said I knew enough of your disposition to be certain that had you been absolutely irrevocably decided against me you would have acknowledged it to Lady Catherine frankly and openly so he hears that and he's like are you saying there's a a chance (laughs) (laughs) and so this is so satisfying to readers because Lady Catherine who's just she is trying to drive this wedge she unwittingly pulls them back together because He's they like, she didn't say their no. pride apart uh, or their pride aside and and uh, admit that they were wrong and they couldn't like get that initial apology going between each other. Um, and I think what's like so funny about like Lady Catherine's character too is that they do make her out to be like this big bad lady who is a tyrant who everyone listens to, but like not a single person actually listens to her at all in this book. Like except yes. Mr. Collins. Yeah, except for Mr. Collins. Like there is not a single person in this book that is like bending over backwards for her they're all like okay you old bat like get out of here literally just mr collins 
Nobody else. And that is um, so Because even funny. Charlotte is like, uh, Lady okay. Catherine is something. She's something. Oh, man. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That, I do like that question. Ah, uh, so good. The last question I'll ask you, because I think you'll have some opinions on this. Mm -hmm. um, so the works of Jane Austen have been obviously the inspiration for numerous contemporary books and films. And that's either adaptations of this story specifically or works that are based on it. Mm -hmm. So what universal themes or, you know, for our sake, like tropes in this novel, mm -hmm. do you think resonate today with modern romances? So happy ever after like everyone loves that however i think in this this was like the og like miscommunication trope mm -hmm. um like this was the blueprint for a good miscommunication rom com because i like, at the end of the day this is like a romantic comedy yes like, i know it's a classic novel but like this is a rom-com it from is the 1800s so i do feel like a lot of books have taken like the skeleton of Pride and Prejudice and have twisted it to like however they need it to be but at the end of the day like that is the heart and soul like of the miscommunication trope um, especially if it's a billionaire romance yes and like the I don't want to say enemies to lovers but like almost like a rivals to lovers mm -hmm. Um, type trope as well that is built off of this communication like like I think of like Allie Hazelwood books for example there is always something that happens at the beginning where like this dude's an asshole like I don't know like who he thinks he is and blah 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 only to find out like this is actually one of the best men that you've ever met in your life and he's yeah. been helping you from the beginning and like it was all just one giant mis misunderstanding and they end up falling in love and so I feel like like, an Allie Hazelwood rom-com reads very similarly to Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, it does. And it eats every time. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think, like, those are two really big ones that, like, a lot of people take inspiration from. Yeah. And I would add to that, um, another thing that kind of you see, like, trope-wise from this is a second chance romance. Yeah. Because Lizzie, like, she rejects him and she's like, once she realizes that she messed up and she is in love with him, she is like, well, shit, like there goes my one chance yeah. at happiness because I will never find a man like him again. But it turns out that he has never stopped loving her. And right. so like people just they eat the shit for breakfast. They love it. They love the drama. Like you said, like the humor throughout is very mm -hmm. important and something that people carry through with like romantic comedy being an entire genre. Like this does just feel like it was kind of the first of its kind. Yeah. And people loved it so much that they were like, we're going to dedicate a genre to this. Right. Well, and that's kind of like, the glory that is Jane Austen is that she was the first of her kind. Like mm -hmm. she was out here writing books that paved the way for not only other female authors, but just like this type of genre, like you said, to like become what it is. And so that's just something super cool and special because I think a lot of people, you know, kind of wrote her off to begin with because she was a female author. Yeah. And like, look what it's done for literature today. If you all haven't read or, you know, watched adaptations of mm -hmm. the other, like, of Jane Austen's works, they are all fantastic. Like, I'm not kidding you. And I know Pride and Prejudice tends to be, like, people's favorites. And yeah. for good reason. It's amazing. But you have to give the others a chance. Even if you don't want to read them, because yeah. maybe reading these type of, like, older novels is not your thing, then watch an adaptation sure. because there are so many good like modern takes uh recently they did with dakota johnson yes dakota johnson was the lead in the modern uh, like adaptation just a few years ago of persuasion by jane oh, austen yeah. so good so good they basically take it and they they make it like appealing to a modern eye and there are some you know changes and some like in how sure. some of the dialogue sounds and some of the interactions but it's very true to the story in general and it's just it's so good uh love yeah. that one a lot so yeah. that'll be I not, I your that. homework i'll also have to watch that adaptation i have not seen it you'll love it twist my arm it twists your arm no it's so good um yeah so those are our, our discussion questions we hope this episode of too long didn't read pride and prejudice has been helpful to you all 
But join us next week as we continue the Pride and Prejudice discussion by discussing movie adaptations. Um, And then the week after, we're going to keep the good times going, and we are going to be discussing Pride and Prejudice fanfics that we have found. So it's going to be two back-to-back mini-sodes for Pride and Prejudice, just as we kind of round out the rest of summer. Um, I know a lot of people are transitioning either back into school or, you know, end of summer plan. So we're going to, you know, do a a couple mini-sodes to to ease you into that. Yeah, because you might not have a full, what, hour and 20 minutes to listen to us ramble. We get that. And I get it. (laughs) But uh, go ahead, start looking up Pride and Prejudice fan fiction and, and watching Pride and Prejudice movies if you haven't already. We'll talk to you next time. And as always, let's get lit. 